Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the Miles, North Carolina. Tonight, tonight I begin another adventure. So about two years ago, two and a half years ago now, I put up a series of really short videos called building a uh, 45 foot antenna tower for 45 bucks, I think it came out to be. And that was pretty successful. There were some people who were like, no, nah, it'll never work. Buy yourself a metal masted, uh, you know, real stand up tower. Which by the way, if money was no object, I certainly would. But in the end, it worked out really great. In fact, it's become kind of a prickly bear. It's got a bunch of other antennas hanging off of it now. And I assume that it'll probably hang in there for another four or five years before it needs to come down and have some work done to it. But in the meantime, another issue has cropped up, and that is this. Winter's coming. And inside the house, I don't have any radio gear, really. I mean, I do. I have that tram... Uh, I think it's an 1148 or 1248, which is like a scanner antenna, and it does have CB capabilities, but it's a pretty weak CB antenna. I have that hooked up to that nice RCI that I got from Dallas Rife a few years back, and that's, you know, pretty much my inside radio, that and a scanner. I picked up some stuff at HamFest and just been wanting to do this ever since we moved up here. I wanted to have something in my guest room, which is also kind of like my little office, you know. I've got my computer in there that I do the video editing for this here. And uh, I wanted to have a radio set up in there that, that I could use when it's just too darn cold. Because to come out here to the shop and then warm it up in the wintertime is great if I'm going to be out here all day doing work on, you know, restoration work or whatnot. And I'll just play out here and listen to some music or whatnot. But for a lot of times, uh, firing up that fireplace or that wood-burning stove that I have out here to heat this place up for maybe an hour or so it just isn't worth it. So there's a lot of times in the winter that I just don't get the chance to do the things I want to do. Anyway, back to what I'm actually going to be doing, and that is I decided I'm going to build another tower. I'm going to build a freestanding tower, no guy supports, whatever, and I'm going to put it out there on uh, over by where the solar is and the satellites and everything that I've installed over the summer. So that I've got a tower there, I'll run the wires, which my little uh, guest room happens to be on that side of the house anyway, so it's not like it's a super long cable run. And that's it. My plan is to do this. I want to take the last 4x4x16, four by four by which is the same pallet full that I picked up when I did the first antenna tower project. It's the last one. I paid $1.97 for these 16-footers years ago. It's been four years probably. So I'm going to take those, that last one buried about three foot in the ground, and that's actually what I've done today. Put it about three, three and a half feet in, put 150 pounds of uh, concrete down in the hole with it, mixed it up, poured it in there, and it's setting. So that's going to be phase one. That would give me 13 feet, 12 and a half feet, something like that. That's not enough. So what the next phase is I'm going to do here is I have one 10 foot section of steel conduit and I'm going to use that and I'm going to put U-bolts in like around it and I'm going to have those situated so that I can lower it down to that 12 foot height to install all my antennas on a step ladder and then when I'm done I'm going to push that thing up, put a screw or two in through the, uh, in through the, the, uh, the pipe and that will hold it to the mast along with those bra braces to keep it. So. I'm going to probably have it about, I don't know, two and a half, three feet down on the mast. So we're looking at, let's say the mast right now is 13 feet. That piece that I'm adding to it is 10. We're going to lose three off of that. Well, not bad, not bad, right? I mean, about a 20 footer. So that's the idea. That is the plan. And on the very top of that, I'm going to be putting another Antron or SolarCon A99 up on top. And then the ham setup is, I'm actually going to make a video on it here right after I finish filming this one, but I got a long wire antenna, a 100 foot long wire antenna, and that's going to be hooked to an antenna tuner with a ham rig whenever I can finally save up to get it. And of course that means it's time to renew my ham uh, licensing because they've been expired uh, for years now. I think it expired right before I came up here, so we're going on six, seven years. So not going to go for tech class, just going to go for uh, general and not extra class, just, just going to go middle of the road and, uh, and play with that for a little while. And of course I've been saving up trying to, I've actually sold some stuff off too to help pay for the solar project, but I'm going to be saving up trying to look for a good used uh, HF rig for ham. So stay tuned for that. But then the third antenna that I want to put out there, I've also uh, I've got on order right now is called a, uh, it's a, it's like a long, not a long wire, it's, what do we call that? It's just a, it's a, it's a band. It's a, a loop antenna, but it's specifically tuned for most of the shortwave. So there's several different antenna lengths inside of it, and it is uh, adjustable. But I want to hang that off the wooden part of it. So it won't be that high off the ground, but it will be outside of the house because I do love to listen to shortwave in the evenings. And uh, all I have is a long wire antenna that's just something I put together myself and just kind of wraps around the ceiling in that room. 
But now I've also got a really nice shortwave antenna and I want to be able, or shortwave radio, and I want to be able to listen to that as well. So I know I could use the, the long wire antenna for that, and I will probably, you know, until I get a ham rig, a dedicated rig, but that's the plan. That's the plan. So let's go outside. We'll take a look at it. This has been a rambling video, but we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to show you, those of you who are getting into the hobby and thinking about putting up your first base station, and you're worried that uh, you're going to burn down your house, you know, if a lightning hits it, this is a great alternative. This is a way to have it freestanding from the house. It's going to be about the same height as my roof, so not like I'm gaining any height, but it's keeping it away because I already have a TV antenna and that scanner antenna and another TV antenna hanging off the house. I don't want to put anything more on that side of the house. Just aesthetically, I'm not interested in it. And I've kind of got my antenna farm growing now on that side of the property, so that's what we're going to do. Let's go check it out. All right, here it is. Let's check it out. So, 16-footer. It's the last of the 16-foots that I got for $1.97. I've made a lot of projects out of this. As you can see up at the top there, I did cut it at a bevel so the rainwater doesn't collect there. And along this front side, I'm going to put brackets, little U-brackets, right, like that, all the way along it. And so, well, not all the way along it, but on the upper half of it. And then I'm going to attach that 10-foot steel pole there. And, of course, I'm going to ground it down. So looking at about 20, maybe 22 feet max. Um, not a overly complicated project, but, again, like I was saying back in the, in the shop, at the top I want to have an antron. Right about there I want to hang my long wire antenna for the ham band. It's going to, one's going to go off that way, one's going to go off that way. And then right below that, or maybe a foot or two below that, it might even be facing the opposite direction, I bought a dedicated shortwave loop antenna. And then I'm going to run my wires down, run them over across here, and they're going to go to the house. And I'm hoping to get all that done before that hard freeze sets in and I can't dig. But like I said, it's a beautiful day today, even though it's in mid-October. And I was able to get that hole dug, pour some concrete, and uh, so that's going to set up. And maybe midweek, I'll start working on the wiring and all that. But... That's the plan. Stay tuned for part two when I start putting all that stuff together. Everything hardens out. And part three, well, I'll show you the complete finished deal. But not bad. Not bad. Anyway, until next time, take care.